You've been at four chapters already? <laughs> Alright. So, we know the. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Coffee. We know the Milky Way is a big galaxy containing billions of stars. It's enormous. It takes light 100,000 years to get from one side to the other. It takes 250 million years for the sun to go around at once. And there's 400 billion suns in that thing. Each one of them probably with planets. Up to 400 billion. So, there's a lot of stuff Terrible. in a galaxy. But what we're going to learn in this chapter is all the different types of galaxies there are. They were mainly classified by this guy. His name was Edwin Hubble. They named the Hubble Space Telescope after him. And he had a big telescope, as you can see. And he looked at far-off galaxies with his telescope. <laughs> and he classified them by their shapes. <laughs> He also figured out that the universe was expanding, which was one of the major scientific discoveries ever. So the first type, the type we're familiar with uh, from last chapter, are called spiral galaxies. A lot of the galaxies you look up at are spiral galaxies. What that means is they have a center with these what, what he called spiral arms that spiral around like this. And the whole thing is spinning around and around and around. This is a spiral galaxy seen edge on. It's called the Sombrero Galaxy. <laughs> Isn't that pretty cool? Yeah. This is what we think the Milky Way is, a spiral galaxy. Actually, we think the Milky Way is a barred spiral galaxy, which I'll show you that in a minute. Now, spiral galaxies are classified as spiral A, spiral B, or spiral C based on how big the central bulge is and how tight the arms are wrapped around the center. So if you look at this one right here, do you see how loosely those arms are wrapped around the center? They aren't really wrapped tightly. They're just kind of hanging out there loose. That would be... Um, uh, a, a spiral C. Spiral C have the smallest bulges and loosest arms. So that's a very loose arm. Those arms there are much tighter. You see how they're kind of wrapped more around the center? They curve more instead of just hanging off like these. So that would be a spiral A or B right there. That one's kind of loose. That actually, that one right there looks like a barred spiral. Now what a barred spiral is, is when there's a bar going across the center. Do you see how it looks like there's a straight bar going across the center there? That's a barred spiral. And to me it kind of looks like a TIE fighter from Star Wars. <laughs> we think that the Milky Way is probably a barred spiral, the galaxy we're in. It's hard to tell because you can't see our galaxy from far away because we're in it. Yeah. Um, are those lighter swirls where, like, the bunches of stars and everything? Yes, all of this is billions and billions of stars. All the stuff that looks like just cloudiness, those are stars. Do they know why the stars kind of form in that pattern? Where they're Do they know why these, uh, these uh, the arms? arms are there? Yeah. Yes, they do. Um, and uh, it, it gets rather complicated, but... Um, uh, it has to do with gravity, why it curves like this. You know, they're moving around the center. And um, it has to do with uh, what they call gravitational waves that kind of run through the galaxy and push some stars. Some stars get pushed together and other places get pulled apart. And you end up with areas that are high, very dense, and that's the spiral arm. And you end up with areas that aren't very dense, and that's not the spiral arm. Did you have a question? Uh, what exactly you said was in the middle of the galaxy? So in the middle, that's called the galactic bulge. And that's, where and that's a bunch of stars. That's where everything rotating around? The bulge is the part of the middle, and everything rotates around the bulge. Okay. The bulge is also stars, though. Lots of stars in the middle, too. Okay. 
doing fusion? Every star is doing fusion in the middle of the star. Uh -huh. But these stars are spread out far apart. It's normally about four light years between two stars. This one, do you see that the arms are tightly spiraled around the center? That's a, probably an A type or a B type. This one's a little bit looser. That might be a C type. That one's really tight. That's a, that's a type A. Are we good with the different types of spiral galaxies? Is that exciting to you? Very. Do it, Alistair. Slash McLean. Here's a barred spiral. See how there's a bar going down the middle? Yes. And the arms seem to come off the bar. Here where the arms are, that's where I was saying, Maggie, the gases get pushed together there to make a bunch of stars. And here the gases don't really get pushed together as much. And why that happens is pretty complicated. They're still working on trying to figure it out. It has to do with the way gravity works in this big thing. And it has to do with supernovas and disturbances that tend to move through a galaxy. So, barred spirals are SBA, SBB, SBC. A is the um, biggest center and tightest, most tightly wrapped. C is the smallest center and most loosely wrapped. The next type he talked about were called elliptical galaxies. Do you all know what an ellipse is? It's a flattened circle. You want me to draw an ellipse? Yeah. Of course you want me to draw an ellipse. You can't wait till I draw an ellipse. You ready? There's an ellipse. Whoa. I think you need to go make a living out of that. Yeah, I'm, I am. I'm doing that right now. Um, <laughs> now you're the teacher that goes to like all the classrooms and does this yeah, like, perfect me. circle. <laughs> Thing. This is a flat ellipse. This is an almost circular ellipse. Elliptical galaxies are classified as E0 all the way through E7. E0 is the most circular. E7 is the flattest. An E7 might look like that. So this would be an E0. This might be an E4. And this might be an E7. You see what I'm saying? The elliptical galaxies are the biggest ones. They have more stars than any of them. Why is that? They think it's because galaxies can interact with one another and meld, like two spiral galaxies can come together, and when they do that, the interactions make it into an ellipse. So they think the ellipticals are from many galaxies coming together to make big ones. That one looks almost circular, doesn't it? Yeah. That's probably an E0. Doesn't that one right there look a lot flatter? Yeah. That's probably an E7. There's a bunch of them here. That's a little bit flat, but not as flat as that one. Okay, so do stars ever collide or they just like fuse or anything? Stars can collide, but it's very rare. So like when they combine galaxies, you really there's so much empty space between stars that usually when galaxies combine, there's very little stars actually hitting one another. They just go right by one another. But the gravity of the entire galaxies affects both galaxies and changes the shape of the whole galaxy, even though the stars aren't hitting one another. Isn't that cool? It'd be like if you had a football team over here and another team over here and they ran across the field. If the field were big enough, probably none of the players would hit one another. they just go by. And that's kind of the way galaxies work when they collide. There we go. There's an E7 that looks like. Or that one might be an E7. That's probably an E1. E2, that's probably an E0. That's almost per perfectly circular. 
An elliptical galaxy might contain a trillion stars, which is four or five times as many as we might have. Even more than that. Two, three trillion, ten trillion. Then he saw some galaxies that he called irregular galaxies. They didn't have any particular shape, so he called them irregular. These two galaxies are called the Magellanic Clouds. Can you say Magellanic Clouds? Magellanic Clouds. Magellan saw them and talked about them. They're, visible, they're the only galaxies you can see in the sky with the naked eye. But you can't see them from the Northern Hemisphere. You can only see them from the Southern Hemisphere. Because they're on that side of the Earth. So if the Earth is here, we're looking towards this way. They're down there. So you can't see the Magellanic Clouds except from the Southern Hemisphere. But they look like clouds in the sky. But they aren't clouds, they're galaxies that are pretty close to us. And so you can see them with the naked eye. Each one of them might have 30 or 40 billion stars. A lot less than our two or 300 billion stars. So these are smaller galaxies than ours. And do you see they aren't really spiral, they aren't really elliptical, they're irregular galaxies. And Hubble made two classifications, irregular one and irregular two. He thought irregular ones looked like a little like spiral galaxies that had been misshapen. And he thought irregular two looked like um, they were exploding. That looked like maybe an explosion went off and fired stuff out in all directions. I think that uh, these Magellanic clouds are supposed to be irregular twos. I'm not sure. They're irregular, but I don't know if they're irregular one or two. And then you got your dwarf galaxies. You see that right there? That's a dwarf galaxy. It's a small galaxy. It might only contain a few million stars, or maybe a couple billion. Much less, maybe a hundredth of the size of our galaxy. They're called dwarf galaxies, and they're by far the most common type of galaxy is a dwarf galaxy. There's more dwarf galaxies than any other type. Yeah? Are there still planets around those stars? Probably. <coughs> but we, our telescopes aren't good enough to see close enough to, to know if there are. Do you think that... But every, every star we look at in our solar system pretty much has a planet or two around it, we think. So... Probably those do too. Do you think that um, the telescopes will be more advanced like in our lifetime? Yeah, they've gotten more advanced in the last 20 years. We're about to launch one to replace the Hubble that's going to be like 10 times as powerful as the Hubble. Is that called the James Webb? Yeah, is that your project? No. The James Webb Space Telescope. You want to see video footage of galaxies? Yes. Oh, man! They took it down? They took it down. Oh, what? man. Can I use the restroom? Mr. Willis? What? Can I use the restroom? Please. Yes. Okay. Here we go, I got it. Galaxies are categorized according to their apparent shape. These shapes are typically divided into elliptical, spiral, or irregular. The shape of a galaxy gives a clue to the age and types of star within the galaxy. Spiral galaxies have a central bulge of stars surrounded by a disk that contains arms which form a spiral structure. Stars in the bulge of a spiral galaxy tend to be older and redder than the rest. There's also a much fainter, roughly spherical stellar halo encompassing the disk. An example of a spiral galaxy is one of our nearest neighbors, the Andromeda galaxy. Spiral 
spiral galaxies are spiral galaxies with a bar of stars across the middle of the galaxy. The Milky Way is thought to be a barred spiral galaxy, as are about two-thirds of all observed spiral galaxies. Spiral and barred spiral galaxies are subclassified by how tightly wound the spiral arms appear. Elliptical galaxies don't show any structure, but have a smooth ellipsoidal shape, appearing as a large spherical or elliptical ball of stars. Elliptical galaxies can be classified in terms of how long and thin they appear. Elliptical galaxies don't actively create new stars, but usually contain very old stars and little gas and dust. The stars in an elliptical galaxy are often close together, making the center seem like one giant star. If the Earth were inside an elliptical galaxy, the amount of light coming from the surrounding stars would mean that it would be bright all the time, no day and night. Irregular galaxies are those with no defined shape. Many irregular galaxies probably used to be spiral or elliptical until they were disrupted by the pull of neighboring galaxies. galaxies. Most far-off galaxies are active galaxies. 
This means they give off huge amounts of radiation. This picture here is a picture of one. It's called a radio galaxy. There's the galaxy there. And there are these huge radio lobes. And this is only seen with a radio telescope where gas in this area is giving off a lot of radio waves. And there's other types of active galaxies that they call quasars and Seifert galaxies. These are galaxies that are giving off a whole lot of radiation for some reason. And it confused astronomers for the longest time why these galaxies, like why does this galaxy shoot stuff off to either side? Well, they figured out that the reason was because the center of galaxies have a supermassive black hole. And these are galaxies that the black hole is consuming stuff really fast. A lot of stuff is falling into the black hole and swirling around it as it falls in and getting real hot and shooting off a bunch of radiation. Which was what was happening when the universe was young and smaller. When the universe was young, the universe is about 13.6 billion years old. Is anybody with me here? Mm -hmm. The universe is real old, but when the universe was young, these galaxies were all close together, running into one another, absorbing a lot of material, stuff goes falling into the black hole at the center, and radiation comes shooting off as it swirls around and gets faster and shoots off the, the edges of the black hole and creates a lot of energy. And that's what this stuff is, these big radio lobes, is stuff shooting out of the black hole that's at the center. And the reason why we only see that coming from galaxies that are real far away is because when you look at something real far away through a telescope, you're actually looking into the past. Whoa. What? Because it takes light billions of years to get from those galaxies to us. So if, if something is 10 billion light years away, the light has been traveling from that to us for 10 billion years. So we're not seeing it as it is now. We're seeing it as it was 10 billion years ago when the universe was very young and much smaller and there were a bunch of collisions between galaxies going on and, and, and not, ever, not all the stuff had settled out and, and a lot of stuff was falling into the black holes. Our, our galaxy, the Milky Way, was probably once an active galaxy and uh, was eating stuff up in the middle, but now it's not active anymore. It's, the black hole at the center has pretty much cleared everything out and it just eats a little bit of stuff and doesn't give off a whole lot of energy. Santana? Oh, no question. Space. So, we usually see active galaxies way far off in a radio galaxy is an example, and you've probably heard of a quasar. Quasar stands for a quasi-stellar radio object or something like that. But uh, anyway, the, in a Seifert galaxy, you probably haven't heard of that. But anyway, these are these are types of galaxies that we now know is just they're they're active because the black hole in the center is swallowing stuff up, and you usually see these active galaxies real far away because this happened a long time ago when the uh, black hole was so swallowing so much stuff. Finally, this is a map that we have made of what we call our local group. These are all the nearby galaxies. There's us, that's the Milky Way. There's the Andromeda Galaxy. The distance between us and the Andromeda Galaxy is, I think, two million light years. So it takes light two million years to get from Andromeda to us. If you remember, our galaxy is about 100,000 light years from one edge to another. So it would take tw 20 of our galaxies put end to end to reach to the Andromeda Galaxy. And there's a bunch of other little galaxies. These are dwarf galaxies, or irregulars that are going around us. All of these galaxies are orbiting our galaxy. And this one right here, Sagittarius Dwarf, is getting swallowed up by our galaxy right now. That's called galactic cannibalism. And there's another big galaxy in our local group. It's called Andromeda. It's in the direction of the Andromeda constellation, which I'll show you tonight at the beach. 
and we can see it with that one of these telescopes um, or binoculars. You can see the Andromeda galaxy, and uh, it also it's about the same size as our galaxy. It's a spiral, and it's got a whole bunch of other galaxies orbiting it. And our calculations show that Andromeda is going to hit the Milky Way and collide with it, and they're going to become one in about five billion years, which is about the same time our sun is going to expand and swallow up the Earth. So it's going to be an exciting time in only five billion years. Would that affect Earth? Probably not, but... I mean, the Earth getting swallowed by the sun will affect her. How many years equal How many what? Like a regular year equal Now, a light year is a distance, not a time. A light year is the distance that light travels in a year. That's called a light year. So it's a real big distance. But, because light goes really fast. But compared to the size of a galaxy, it's not that big of a distance. Because galaxies are so huge. Three. You want to see video footage? We don't have time. Video footage of the Milky Way running into Andromeda. There's the Milky Way. There's Andromeda. Wait, you might want to wait 20 seconds to watch this. It won't take long. Here they come. Oh. Oh. No. Oh, no. Look out! Don't go in the closet. Did you see that No. Wait a sec. It's gonna happen. Oh, boom! Oh. oh! Wait a sec. They're going back at it. No. Come back. Round two. Come on, Milky Way. Five billion years. Oh! Oh! Yeah. Oh! oh. Now cool. there. Now it's an elliptical. It's a tie. Oh. We win. See how galaxies can change?